resistance show up in your life? Physically, yeah. Tense. Tense? Yeah. Yeah. Either, you know. yeah. Stress. Stress. Yeah. How else? Loss. Loss. Yeah. How else? <laughs> Basically, resistance shows up in your life as um, anything that's a lack. So lack of time, lack of money, lack of love, lack of health, lack of joy, lack of anything that you say you want. If it's not in your life, that is your resistance to having. Because we are a um, an infinite being, we're an infinite being, and we're <coughs> guided by an infinite being, and we can be, do, and have anything we want to be, do, and have, so by the very nature that we're not be, being, doing, and having it, is an indication of your resistance to it. So, um, when we resist something, the thing that we resist actually builds up, this, you know, that resistance energy builds up in us and creates energy blocks. And remember in the beginning when I said that I can read energy blocks in, in people in your aura, in your unconscious mind, you know, at the origin of your self. Um, so what I see when I tune into that is, is I see they're like blocks, they're like walls. And it's just energy, so you can change it. However, in order to change it, you have to want to change it. You have to want, you have to have a desire to have a different life. You have to have a desire to be more than you're being right now. So, you probably want to write that down. So, uh, that desire is... Um, the desire is what draws to you that which you're asking for. So when someone says to me, how can I be, do, or have more? My response to them is, you have to desire it. Drive back, drive back. Exactly, because once you start to desire to allow more into your life, then two things happen. One is your soul loves you so much that it will present to you everything that is contrary to the desire. So basically, the shit will show up you know, for you to choose not to allow it in. And I remember when I started down this path many years ago, um, the more I would ask of myself to be more of my me, my authentic self, then the more of my programming that was the opposite of my authentic self would show up for me to release. So, the anger showed up, the resentment showed up, the sadness showed up. All of the things that were uh, programs that I bought and sold myself from other people showed up for me to release. And it's good to know that because when I was going through that process, I didn't know that's what I was going through. 
So I'm kind of like, I'm condensing this for you. So you can, you can basically do the fast track of it and not have to go through, you know, the 20 years of whatever I went through to figure it out. I'm just giving it to you in a nutshell. So, um, hold that thought. So I have stream of consciousness going. So what happens is it presents itself for you to release. Now, um, you can just thank it and keep it to the curb. So basically, it's about um, choosing, and again, the word choose, choosing, because language is really important here. You know, we live and die by the quality of our self-talk. And I didn't make that up. That's not my thing. I mean, if you, you can look at anywhere in, in the Bible and it'll tell you that repeatedly. You know, in Numbers chapter 14 something, it says, it, I will give to you that which you say. So it's, I, you know, ask and it is given. You know, seek and you shall find. Seek, whatever you're seeking, you'll find. So if you're negative, you'll, you'll get it. Because that's how powerful you are. So, um, also when you reach higher, for like higher levels of existence, higher levels of wealth, higher levels of sales, higher, higher levels of relationships, higher levels of health, wealth, whatever it is you're reaching for, when you start reaching for that, then everything that is the opposite of that comes up for you to release. So you, 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 because this is about taking responsibility for a greater part of your life. It's about taking responsibility for your awesomeness. So when you decide to be more awesome, whatever limiting belief that is against you being awesome, you know that self-talk that goes, I'm an idiot, or the self-talk that goes, I'm a loser, I'm a self, like the lady in the gym, you know, I'm stupid, I can't have that, life is hard, other people can, but I can't. Um, it's just not in the cards for me. God didn't will it. Whatever your story is will come up for you to release it and let it go. And the cool thing about me sharing this with you is I didn't know that's what was happening to me when it was happening. So I thought I was still that. So what would come up for me is, you know, you can't have that. And I'd be like, oh, what do I have to do? What do I can't have it? Or I guess I just have to decide myself. Or maybe it's just not meant to be, oh my God. You know how I feel about that statement. It's just not meant to be. And I'm like, it's not meant to be because you haven't decided yet. So when you give yourself that excuse, it's just basically an out. When the thing you ask for doesn't show up, and you say it's not meant to be, you're just giving yourself an out so you can be a victim. Because if it's meant to be, so it's you, up to me. Yeah, question goes. Um, so you're saying that, you said your soul loves you so much that it will reveal to you, I, Everything that is the opposite of what your your greatness is. And that's like the challenge that reveals itself so that you can go through it so that you can attain whatever. That's right, whatever the other side is. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It could also show up so you could cancel it. So yeah. You could delete it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to run you through a couple of repatterning exercises today to like literally, so you, you're going to get to choose what you want to let go of, and I'm going to, I'm going to write you through some repatterning exercises so that it's done. It's just done. And then you have that tool, and then you can rerun those exercises any time at all. But you have to choose to do the work. So you have to, you know, this is about being a choice point. You have to choose to reach higher. You have to choose to take more responsibility for your life. So anytime you're saying, I don't have enough time, money, love, health, 
well, then you're basically staying on the victim. Because what everything you don't have enough of, you've set it up that way. And that's the part I think is the most difficult for most people to like get their head, their arms around, their mind around. Yeah. But how do you gene up for right enough time? Because obviously there's sometimes you don't have enough time to do this stuff. Well, say for instance, you want to go to the gym, go to work. Time to go back to that same problem. So you just you time that differently. Say that the time you're saying you don't have enough time, well, just appreciate the time you have. Yeah, yeah. So anytime you say to yourself, I don't have enough time, um, you need to say cancel, dissolve, and release. So write that down. Cancel, dissolve, and release. Cancel, dissolve, and release. Because here's the deal, and this is a, a big concept for, for another training. Um, time, is, uh, time is an illusion. So the more we tell ourselves we don't have enough time, the less time we actually believe we have. And the tighter and more compressed our neurology gets around what we need to get done, and then the more time seems to fly by because we create our own reality based on our projections. And the same is for money, for love, for health. All of these things are just um, other ways of seeing our own limitations <coughs> played out. Uh, uh, let me reframe that. All of these things are just ways for us to see how we limit ourselves and having it be played out in our real-time experiences. So when you're not at cause, because I want you to, I want you to step into my world and understand that you are a cause over your world. And that's the point of today. If there's anything I can leave you with today, question? Oh, I was just putting this into my phone. It's just off of me. It's the first time. Uh, back up a couple sentences so I understand where you're at. Um, cancel and dissolve. That's what you mean. Yeah, so cancel okay. dissolve and release. Thank you. Um, you bet. So, um, so I want you to step into my world and understand that you are a cause over everything in your world. And that's like the starting point. When you can start at that point, even if you don't like looking in the mirror, start at that point. Because when you start at that point, you are, you are empowering yourself to change it. If you're not willing to start at that point yet, then you've got some more work to do. Because you've got to get to this point where you're willing to look in the mirror and go, whatever's going on in my world, I've created this. Saying those words puts you immediately at cause, like that. And when you're at cause, then you can change anything. And I can give you, you know, we could spend like days and I can give you examples of the truth of that from all the thousands of hours I've been doing this in my lifetime. And, you know, we really don't need to go there because you just need to choose now to decide that. So, how long does it take for the change to actually take place? Let's just say I want to show up in your external world. Yes. Um, that's always a cool question. So it, it it's already there, and thank you for bringing that up because I started this out with resistance. Um, so it's already there. It's already happened. For you to see it in physical form as an experience in your life. It's just a matter of how much you're allowing that to flow through you. Because it's just energy. So you'll see it when you believe it. You'll that's see it question. when you believe it. That's Absolutely. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, you'll see it when you believe it. So when you step into the space of I believe that I am a cause, then everything will begin to unfold for you. And so that's a vibration to hold throughout the day. Now, um, 
it's, it kind of works like this. So if you've ever dated anyone, and for the first three months or six months you thought they were a god or a goddess, and then one day you woke up and went, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? Or, you know, this person is not so godly anymore. It's um, because we all, in the, in the beginning of learning a new pattern, we all show up putting our best foot forward. And then as time goes by, we can, we can get lazy. So when that person falls off the pedestal and you no longer see them as a god or a goddess, is when they stop putting their best foot forward. So you gotta keep yourself in check. Like this is a, this is a forever process. You're gonna do this for the rest of your life. So from today forever, you're now a cause, and you're changing your self-talk. And you gotta be relentless about it. You have to be relentless and extraordinary. So, what I have found works is to just be relentlessly extraordinary with your self-talk. So you, you never let a negative slur slide. And so when you, during the day, when you, if you catch yourself sliding, you put yourself in check. How do you do that? Go do something different. The best, the best hands down way to shift your self talk is when you start to get negative, change your physiology. So if you're sitting at your desk and you're starting to go into a negative self talk spiral, get up and move away from your desk. And that's how, why I have you change, you know, space in the room. Because sitting where you're sitting now, you're having a different experience from where you sat before. Because we're on, it's what, 72% water. So every time you change your physiology, you change your neurology, which changes your behavior, which changes your results. So getting up and moving, and this is why exercise is so important in your life. You know, every day, do some kind of exercise. And three to four times a week, do something that totally kicks your ass. Because that'll change the frequency. It'll bring up the endorphins and it'll change the frequency of your vibration. <clears throat> if when you're doing vigorous physical exercise, you do self-love, oh my gosh. Now you're creating a really high vibrational pattern. Because the two are like, it's a beautiful thing. It's bringing the mind into the body. And the more you can mix it up, the better. The more you can mix it up, the better. So outdoors, the gym, whatever. And just like, every time you do something, how much you love yourself. Sitting in traffic, there should never be any angst around sitting in traffic because that's a great time to practice self-love. So when we talk about external and internal, it's like, you know, these are like little party tricks, like finding parking, um, <laughs> missing traffic, missing car crashes, uh, just like never being around that stuff. It's just not part of your environment, vibration. You know someone in your life that is um, have, has a propensity for car crashes, you, know, you might want to give them a little bit of space because they're not in a very good place and you don't need that vibration in your life. It's finding an impact between two 3,000 pound cars is a pretty low vibration. <clears throat> Even if they hit you, you're still participating. You still chose it to be there at that time, even if you chose it unconsciously. So, all right, so here's happy. So we know what that does to the water in your system, right? 
So if you're here, let me just talk about negative emotion for a little bit. So if you're here, let's say you're in a place of sadness. You're sad, um, let's say you're sad over the loss of something. A deal, a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a whatever, right? Then basically what you're doing is you're negating all the goodness in your life. So if you want to be in a negative emotion, Give, make an appointment on your calendar for somewhere next week at 10 a.m. on Tuesday to feel that. <laughs> I know, right? It's so ridiculous. It's like going to Syria to see if that's worth the time and having that experience instead of reading about it in the newspaper. Just go fly over there and check it out. See if you like it. And then decide if you need to be reading and tracking it in the news. Oh, God. Right? So make an appointment with yourself to be sad. Let's see how that works out. Because then you get to choose in the moment a higher state of being. Because we're infinite beings. So if this is what you're running, then this is what's permeating your entire being. And it's going out there, and it's bringing back to you experiences to anchor this in. And we don't need that, do we? Well, unless, of course, we think you do, which I can't imagine what you'd want to do that for. But it's sort of like enjoying being about more destruction. It's like, it has a dichotomy. Um, joy. So, how can you have more joy in your life? What if you asked yourself the question, how can I, what can I think right now that would allow me to have more joyful experiences? Kids. Okay, so kids, but kids are not what you think. Well, you thought of it before, but um, now that they're there, unless of course you want to keep having babies, you could probably have joy without continuing to have babies, right? So what could I think right now, what could I choose right now that would allow me to experience joy in this moment? I'm very great. I am great. Yeah. Awesome. I am. I am. Everything, whatever follows the I am is what you become. So I am sad. Or I enjoy. It's your call. It's your causation. Right? Anger. Now, anger has a couple of different uses. Anger, um, if it's someone that's been in a, a lower vibration than anger, anger could be good because it shows movement. Internally, like there's some movement, there's kind of some expression. However, imagine what this is doing to the, to the water and how that water is then vibrating outward and what that's attracting to them. Depression is a, um, so, you know, I've, I've done thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of rewiring on people over the years in both group and individual. And what do, I'll tell you what depression is. Depression is just layers and layers and layers of sadness stacked one on top of the other. So basically it's um, going into a, a, a state of sadness and then anchoring it in and going into another state of sadness and anchoring it in and just stacking it. So there's so many layers of it that it creates depression. And then um, manic depressive is uh, sadness, anger, sadness, anger, sadness, anger, sadness, anger. So the low time in a manic depressive or bipolar person is the sadness layer. And then when they tap into the, like, oh my god, I have to get everything done, everything's so awesome, but you know it's really not. That's, that's the anger showing up and creating that behavior. Like, 
So, this is you. This is your takeoff moment. This is where you get to decide to be your amazing self, your most authentic self. You being more you puts you at more cause over your environment. So, what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment, I want you to write down some of your judgments. Judgments, limiting beliefs. So anything that follows, I can't have, I can't be, do, or have what I want because. Because whatever follows the because is going to be a limitation. Limiting belief, a judgment, basically some form of resistance. What are your top limiting beliefs? And then, and then I'll show you how to clear them. I cannot be, do, or have any cause. Got to go for All right, so what are some of your judgments? What are some of your judgments? <coughs> what comes after the because? I can't be or do what I have because I'm scared of failing. I don't doubt. Scared of failing. Okay. Christian. I can't tell. <coughs> I can't tell because I feel I'm not good at it. Okay, you can't what? Sell. Sell. Got it. Okay. Uh, I can't be away for a long period of time because I don't have to do it right now. Okay. Stop. I didn't put it in. What if you did? What would it be? Just make it up. What? <laughs> I can't think of anything. I, I, I programmed myself not to be, think of myself not being able to do anything. So, are you being, doing, and having everything in your life right now?
the answer is no. Or you would be here. So what what is your because? Why is it why have those things showed up yet? I can't break a validity belief. Do you have everything you'd like you want to have? No. How come? I work. Meaning? It's a process of uh, it's not an overnight success. That could be a little bit of Yeah. Uh, one of the things I wrote is uh, a lot of times it goes through my head, I'm doubting and also fear of being wrong. Yeah. Fear and doubt are the two biggest energy blocks that most people have. And just like a sugar or a caffeine addiction, um, then the ego has a tendency to gravitate toward people, events, and activities that fuel the fear and doubt. And then we can say, see, it's not me. The fear, yeah. Gotcha. Um, I don't want to say. Okay. I can't only eat healthy foods because I don't trust myself. Yeah. So you're setting yourself up. Good, Martin. Um, I put it not worthy enough. Yep. Yeah. Check. Um, I don't know. Uh, I can't. I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, so I you know, can't go through that. I can't say go through that. Yeah. And um, so I don't know. I can't stop learning. I can't stop learning. So you have everything in your life that you want? I feel that I am exactly where I'm supposed to be, and it's everything in my life right now. This is what I want. But that's true. I'm happy with it. And it's so not about being unhappy. The question is do you have everything in your life that you want? Do you have all the money you want? No, money is not what I have here. You don't want money? Well, I don't want money. Do you have all the money you want? No. Okay, how come? Um, I just started a curse, I guess. <laughs> Living is that uh, I just, I haven't been working on this as long as I, I could have been in my past. Yeah, so you've got yourself into a, um, we call it positive, uh, like it's like a way of avoiding looking at things. And so, first of all, I want to validate that we're all exactly where we need to be at this moment, because we've chosen to be here. And that goes for this room and in your life. And, and if there are things that are not in your life that you would like in your life, What's your because? Well, so your because is because you have been working on that. Well, yeah, I've had, I've had things in my past, and I, I didn't recognize a lot of the stuff that you were talking about or that I just kind of going through on many today um, until like, you know, I was talking for a couple of years ago. And so this is, this is a process of me starting over and me setting myself and rebuilding my life. Awesome. Yeah. So here we have time to go. Okay, cool. It's not good. I can't accomplish my goals because I seem not to have them. Okay. So, I can't because my head is tired. Good. Okay. Um, I don't delegate certain responsibilities or tasks because I feel like you'll complete it or complete it correctly, but ultimately I'm going to end up doing it. Right, so therefore, guess what you want to look like? I do. You create it. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, not the resources. Yeah. 
I tend to be in a bad mood at work because I worry about the way it goes. Okay. I get tired. I don't deserve it. I'm not motivated. I'm lazy. It's too late. Yeah. Good. Uh, not enough time. <clears throat> too busy. Uh, it's not something that I'm naturally good at. Yeah. So. What's more of the same time? I'm just going to ask. No, it's not money. Okay. I can't achieve more because I'm not yet skilled. And I'm too busy. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So, uh, okay, so do you want to know how to connect to source so that you can just let that go? Yes. yes. All right. So put everything down and close your eyes. Everything down and close your eyes. And um, so you're a physical being in a body, right? And your energy is infinite. Like you, the you that's in the being, that's in the body, is, is, is infinite. It's just energy. So I want you to go ahead. And imagine your energy just expanding out from your physical body and circle around you. Just expand it out. And expand it out past the person sitting next to you. And expand it out past this room. And expand it out past this building. And expand it out past Los Angeles and expand it out past the United States of America and expand it out past Mexico and Canada and expand it out past the planet and expand it out past the moon and expand it out past Jupiter and expand it out past Venus, and expand it out past the cosmos, and expand it out. And just see your, your energy just expanding it out, expanding it out, expanding it out, all the way out until you connect to source, until you connect to that light, to that source. And you'll know you've connected to the light, to source. And you feel a wave of peace flush over your being. And when you feel that wave of peace flush over your being, this is where you can dissolve, delete, and destroy any limiting belief or judgment. And you can program in anything you want to be, do, or have instead. So the best way to do that is just to say to yourself, I am so grateful and so thankful for me being me. And I am so grateful and so thankful that I have all the time in the world. And you might want to think of a money goal. You can say, I am so grateful and I am so thankful that my consistent weekly income exceeds whatever you want to I am so grateful and thankful my consistent weekly income exceeds X dollars. And I am so grateful and thankful 
that I have that now. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I have joy in this moment. I am so grateful and thankful that all my needs are met, all my wants are covered, and I have a surplus of money left over to help others. And I'm so grateful and thankful for all the blessings that are in my life. I'm so grateful and so thankful for me being me. I'm so grateful and so thankful that I chose this time and space to express my most authentic self. And whatever limiting belief shows up, like I'm not good enough, just to leap, destroy, and dissolve, and say, I am so grateful and so thankful for me to be me. And then if a limiting belief comes up, I don't have enough time, or I don't have enough money, or I don't have enough to say I'm so grateful and so thankful for all the joy, all the abundance, and all the freedom, and all the wealth. Because I get paid for being me. Show up and I get paid to be me. All I have to do is to show up, say I love you to myself, and all the things I ask for just roll through. And then I love. source. 
the source is unconditional, and it gives you whatever you ask for. So all you have to do is love yourself and align with that which you want, and it's yours. So this illusion of too busy, out of time, to this, not like that, it's just an illusion. You've got to stay aligned to source. So when things aren't working in your life, it's because you've disconnected yourself from source. So all you have to do is stop and realign yourself with source. And then there's no space for the limiting beliefs and the judgments because source is unconditional. And the more you repeatedly align with source throughout the day, the more you stand in causation. Because these stories that you're telling yourself about not enough time, not enough money, not enough, I'm not good enough, is a product of some other program or conditioning that you've either accepted, bought and sold yourself, or you're resisting, or you've aligned with. So let me say that again, because this is a really big concept. When we align ourselves with belief, we become it. When we align ourselves with an environment that practices a certain belief, we become it. When we resist a belief, we become it. Because what we, what we resist persists. So if you go through the day, and I've caught myself doing this, I've caught myself going through my day resisting what I needed to get done. And the more I resisted what I needed to get done, the more time it took to complete it, and the benefits and the results from the exercise were actually negated. So if you believe you're not good at selling, when you pick up the phone, guess what's going to get reared back to you? That belief. If you believe that no one can do it as good as you, guess what will be mirrored back to you? They can't do it as good as you. We create these experiences through our limited beliefs. They become our projections. If you believe that you haven't been at it long enough, and that's why you don't have the wealth you want to have, then that would be true. Because who says, how long you need to do something in order for it to be amazing and reap huge benefits from it. That's a program. That's a, you know, when I get into the means training, which is coming up in December at our business course, when I get into the means training, you actually learn that, um, There's a, a, a meme or a thinking system that is of the system. And the system is what most of humanity has lived under since the industrial age. And that system is that we have to go to work, we have to work a certain number of hours a day, and we have to wait until the end of our career to get our golden watch so we can go home and sit in front of the television and die, and that's supposed to be our freedom. And none of that works anymore, because it came out of a whole era of Newtonian physics, in which we soon discovered that isn't even accurate physics. So when we get into quantum physics of the mind, which is what this is, we actually realize that everything is right here, right now, and by saying I'm going to get it later is just basically prolonging all the pain and suffering you've bought into right now. 
selling yourself some story that somewhere down the road it'll be a better life. So whatever we believed yesterday is our life today. And whatever we keep saying, like others can't do it as well, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money, I haven't been out of long enough. Whatever we keep saying, you know, I want good sales, I, you know, I don't have anybody in my office to handle things, you know, I don't have enough resources, whatever the story is, by, by languaging it now, it becomes tomorrow's experience. And then tomorrow's experience is actually more of today, which was really about yesterday. And that life that you think is so grand way out there in the future never shows up. 